Wales. We're joined by the writer Michael Nugent, who's chair of Atheist Ireland, and Father Bill Daly, who's an American priest here in Dublin now uh, with the University of Notre Dame's or Notre Dame's, uh, <laughs> get it right, Thank Newman you. Centre for Faith and Reason uh, here, in, here in the Irish capital. Welcome to both of you. Good Thank afternoon. You. Uh, you've been listening to some of the debate we've already been having uh, on the programme so far. What do you make of the arguments first of all, Father, Father Bill, that have been made uh, in this campaign. Do you think it's a kind of intellectually and morally challenging debate or is it a little too emotional for your liking? Well, you know, human life is all of those things. So I, do, I don't think um, we can always sort those threads out as, and disentangle them as easily as we'd like. Um, I think it's a good place to begin, though. You asked, what did we think of what we've been hearing? And I was born in 1972. In some ways, when I've been talking about this issue, I say I'm the ghost of Christmas future for Ireland. Many people want your future to be what the last 46 years in the United States have been. And uh, that wouldn't be something I would want. But what I would want to say is this. There are four of us sitting here speaking with you, five of us in the room. I believe deeply that there are five compassionate people in this room. We don't disagree about whether we want to be compassionate. We don't disagree about whether we want to be loving. We disagree about what com compassion demands in certain very challenging human circumstances. And perhaps we disagree. I think fundamentally we disagree about which human beings deserve human rights under which conditions. And to, to have a disagreement about that is an intellectual problem. And there can be respectful discussions of when and whether the state acknowledges or bestows human rights among compassionate people. So I, I pledge that I'm yeah. not going to say you're not compassionate, you're not compassionate, and you're not compassionate. Right. And I'd ask that people respect that I'm a compassionate person too, and what we're here to disagree about isn't each other's of course. virtue, but, but the, the issue at hand and the life of the unborn. Michael Nugent, where's the Catholic Church been on this debate in this campaign? Well, I'm encouraged that they uh, are not as vocal as they were in 1983. This time, a week before the last referendum, there was a Catholic bishop making a statement that a vote for that referendum was a vote for the rights of God. So we've moved away from that and, and Catholics have moved away from that. And most of the people who will be voting yes are at least nominally Catholics. And that is because we have recognised over the last uh, number of decades since that referendum that it's, it's a more complex issue, it, it involves empathy and compassion, that the, the amendment has harmed women who uh, don't want to be pregnant, some of them very vulnerable, some of them asylum seekers, uh, women with disabilities who are pregnant, victims of rape and incest. It's also harmed women who do want to be pregnant who may have become pregnant because of IVF because they desperately want a family and are in a loving relationship but find themselves uh, with their health threatened by the pregnancy or find themselves mm. uh, with a fatal fatal abnormality. So we're now recognising those complexities and I think that that's a, a much more positive debate than it was in 1983. The Eighth Amendment went into the Constitution in Ireland four years after the visit in 1979 of Pope John Paul II and if the people of Ireland vote yes next Friday, Father Bill... Uh, they'll be voting to take that amendment out of the Constitution four months or so before the visit of Pope Francis to Ireland. Very interesting uh, landscape between those two visits, those two papal visits. When you think back to 1979, divorce was not possible in Ireland. Homosexuality was illegal. You certainly couldn't have same-sex marriage. Uh, contraception was illegal. Ireland has changed phenomenally in that period of time. There are many people I've spoken to here in Dublin who, uh, in the last few weeks, who say this is just the next stage in the story of Ireland evolving away from what it once was. There's no question that many people want to frame it that way. You know, when I, I moved to Ireland in October of 2016 and I was uh, just here a couple of weeks when I was walking over to give um, uh, some masses on mercy at uh, to end the year of mercy at Whitefriar Street Church just near the green where I work, and I got egged on the way there, and I, I thought, okay. You got egged? I got egged. And I thought, okay, people told me there's a lot of anger here. There's some anger here. And uh, what I preached the next day, I said, look, the church, um, being a human institution in all times and places, has hurt people. And people want so much from the church that there is an intensity of anger about the church when it sins. And uh, I deserve to take those eggs. It's what we're here for. 
our Lord could mount the cross, I could take some eggs. And well, what I've been saying to people about very raw because absolutely. of the child abuse crisis in absolutely. Ireland, absolutely, and which of course and we the experienced exposure in the of a cover up involving some of the hierarchy of the Catholic Church and Correct. the moving of priests who have abused children, which means in the minds of many people here, the Church simply doesn't have any moral authority to talk about protecting sure. children anymore. Sure, no one should vote um, to protect the lives of the unborn because a bishop told them to. Yeah. Right. Uh, people shouldn't either, though, strip the rights of an entire category of human beings because they're angry at father or at the bishops. Right? Yeah. Th- this child in the womb didn't reassign any abusing priests. This child in the womb hasn't committed any crimes. This child in the womb hasn't abetted any terrible bishops. And so I hope that when people wake up, whether to vote yes or to vote no, they're thinking about the mother and the baby and, and what compassion demands there. And they're not thinking about how angry they are at the, at the last archbishops of Dublin. Well, along with Father Bill Daly and Michael Nugent, also in the studio here in RTE Studios, we have Goretti Horgan, who's a lecturer in social policy at Ulster University, well known to the programme, as is Don McAvoy from Both Lives Matter. Welcome. And uh, Gretty, first of all, you, I understand you've been campaigning in Donegal that's right, for, for a yes vote. Uh-huh. Do you, are you doing so simply because you think that's the right thing to do or because you think... A yes vote in the Republic will have major implications north of the border. Well, I suppose, first of all, I live in Derry and Derry's kind of part of Donegal. You know, <laughs> Derry City certainly is, you know, historically would have been part of Donegal. Um, and a lot of people in Derry are from Donegal. And, but you don't get a vote. Uh, uh, no, I don't have a vote. Um, I had a vote in 1983, but I've been living in the north too long now. Um, so I do think it's the right thing to do. Um, I think it's the right thing to do partly because uh, I see what's happening uh, down here, which you know, a lot of which doesn't actually happen in the north. The difference um, in the law north and south, and it's interesting that actually the law in the north is not unlike. Um, after twelve weeks, uh, the, sorry, what the proposals down here after twelve weeks are very similar to what the law in the north is at the minute. In other words, that you know, abortion is legal if a woman's life is, uh, or health is at serious uh, risk. Right, after 12, after 12 weeks, weeks. But the yeah. proposal well, here would be... Would be to make it available up to 12 weeks. On yeah. request, uh-huh. up to 12 weeks. Uh, tell me what your thoughts on, on the link between what might happen next Friday dawn and what could happen in Northern Ireland. Well, I think the first thing I would say, now, I am, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm conscious of what Gretty has just said. So as far as I understand, the law in Northern Ireland is... Um, statute and case law. So where the risk is to life and health in a way that is real serious, long-term permanent, Mm. that is read from the position of the statute law, which is... Um, Offence Against the Person Act. So it's not 1861, yes. So it's Offence Against the Person Act. So it is different to what's being proposed in in the South. Yes, because they have a written constitution here and obviously it's a difference. Yes, yes. So sorry, what was the question? Um, Do you think (laughs) there is a, a link between what might happen next Friday um, and the future for women in Northern Ireland? Undoubtedly. Um, and I think that's where um, I've I've never had a vote on anything in, in the Republic of Ireland um, and don't have a vote here. But um, this is one island with um, an invisible border and whatever happens in either jurisdiction will impact the whole of the island. So um, as we said a couple of weeks ago when Grady and I were on together, um, I said that... Uh, Whatever a government in the Republic committed to unification, it's very unlikely that they won't offer abortion to women in Northern Ireland. Now, Mm. what that will look like hasn't been seen yet. Um, But as with Westminster, offering abortion to women of Northern Ireland, women in Northern Ireland actually are, um, they don't have a voice at the minute because we have no local assembly and we're being um, impacted possibly from Dublin, and we have already, and more England so from Scotland Westminster. Well. Yeah, yes. of course, yeah, because well, women, women are travelling already, aren't they? Yeah, exactly, and nobody's forcing those women to travel. So in a way, they do have a voice, and the voice that they have is that when they use that, you know, they you can see that when they use their feet and when they offer um, order abortion pills off the internet, because, yeah. of course, in spite of the prosecutions um, in the North, uh, women continue uh, to use the abortion pills day in, day out. So, you know, really the genie's out of the bottle in terms of abortion in Ireland, north and south. We already have abortion on this island. And in a way, one of the good things about this referendum will be is that the, for the first time, there will actually be a recognition of that by politicians because there hasn't been until now. And certainly in the north, or, I mean, I think our, the politicians in the south are stepping up to the mark now yeah. um, and actually, you know, Re- recognising the reality of people's lives. I Michael, think that's Michael. Right. yeah, I, I think the key is that people are beginning to recognise that no abortion is not an option anymore. You know, we have abortion. The question is, how do we regulate it? Do we have Irish politicians regulating it, or do we have 
British politicians regulating it. There are three to five women a day taking abortion pills in the Republic of Ireland. There are nine to 12 women a day travelling to England for abortion. Uh, those abortions are going to take place regardless of what happens on May the 25th. What May the 25th will determine is whether they are safe and regulated or whether they are unsafe, traumatic and unregulated. That's, so a, that's a prediction you cannot make, right? Well, the, idea, the idea... Fact, well, many people that. think it's inevitable that, that Ireland will take this like, step, even if there's a no vote If I may Friday. make two points. He just yeah. said that what will happen is those are going to take place inevitably. As if the only option right now is exactly what Irish society is doing or what any society is doing. Well, for, how do you stop for the women exporting of abortions then? What you do is you give women better options. You make them feel less as if this is going to be a career-ending choice to bring this child to life. The idea that we can't give women any other option than to kill the child in the womb is simply a, a fake prediction and a false choice. You can't but, stop and, and I, want, I want to go back to this point. That's just to be clear legally, you can't stop women travelling, though, right? You're not proposing that you should. He made a prediction about what will happen if only one thing uh, yeah, remains, because the law, the, the law As already enables women to travel and, people, and women can already get another the pills on the internet. But they if, might make if another if choice if other I, options... One at a time, one at a time. Go ready first, home, then we'll okay. come okay. to Dawn. There are 4,000 children homeless in the south of Ireland. A woman who's faced with a pregnancy at the minute does not, an unintended pregnancy, doesn't just look at the next nine months. She has to look at the next, I was going to say 18 years, but I'll tell you as a parent and a grandparent, you're talking about 45, 50 years, the rest of your life. So if you're living in a hostel, if you're living in a bed and breakfast or a, or a hotel room or something, and you have an unintended pregnancy and you're living there with your other three children, yeah, what options can anybody when, give when, that woman when except the women, a house? When the, women's care, when the, the women's care centre opened up, which is a pro-life centre for women, voluntarily they can come in. In South Bend, Indiana, abortions dropped by 50% in South Bend, Indiana. The law was the same. Their options were the same yeah, well, from a legal fine, point of view. Perfectly but that's, a very, that. that's a very but, but, impoverished on, view of what Michael. options are. And I want to go back to this point, abortion is already but here. Before you move well, away from a, that point, okay. because the others in this campaign, include Michael, will say to you, all, and he's just said, that's fine. If you want to give women more options, absolutely do that. But what about the women who still say, having considered those options, it's a termination for me. Will they have that right? So could I, could I jump in here? Please do. Um, nobody is stopping women travelling. That's, um, that's correct. But nobody's also um, reflecting on the impact of the law. So there may be five or six women accessing abortion pills. I think that's what you said, Greddy. The reality of abortion legislation in Great Britain is that there's one abortion every three minutes. That's 20 abortions every hour. We, as both Lives Matter, did some research that was validated and verified by the Advertising Standards Authority that shows at least 100,000 people are alive today in Northern Ireland because of our laws. So laws don't stop all abortions, but they do um, significantly reduce the rates of abortion. Abortion has tripled over the 50 years um, in Great Britain since it was legislated for. Indeed, but I'm not I... sure how morally compelling that argument is against this argument we're discussing, which is you should allow women, you should trust women to make choices well, about their be own bodies. Because, because both lives matter, you can't discount the lives the that are being lived. It's people who are alive. Well, there's, yes, there's, there's so, so the, the, ar the argument for abortion discounts and discards completely the reality of the unborn human being. Because both lives matter, you're looking to create a culture that affirms life, services that enable life to be chosen, and a law that recognises and protects every human life. The alternative is that we subcategorize and say there are some human beings that are unworthy of protection in law and some lives unworthy of being lived and that is a very dangerous precedent to That's set. Would That's you all take a call from some of our callers? 0030 80 55 55. Uh, we are talking to Father Bill Daly and Michael Nugent, Goretti Horgan and Don McAvoy. We'll go to Jan first in Ballygon. Welcome, Jan. Hello, William. Um, I'm listening carefully there. Uh, I agree with that girl, just whoever she is. I didn't catch Dawn, her name. Don McAvoy, Dawn. yeah. Well, um, I tell you something now. I am dead against abortion unless unless it is just well you can't do nothing else unless it's to save the mother that's the only time that I would say yes abortion because I lay in the hospital for a long time uh, before my daughter was born all them years ago and I'm going to tell you I saw more people going in and out there getting abortions for no reason other than I can't be bothered I can't be bored like that. I don't know how, to, how that happened. I mean, that is what I heard the whole time. I don't know. I don't know. The, I mean, they shouldn't. There's loads of different things. Are you talking I, about a hospital in Northern Ireland, Jan? I am indeed, yes, I am I, I, Is it is it really the case that you saw women having abortions in a hospital in Northern Ireland because they couldn't be bothered? No, I no, 
I saw the people come in and lying in the bed because I was lying in one of the beds myself, but I wasn't having an abortion, not at all. I was what about cases of rape, Jan? Uh, do you well, think a woman should have well, the right to an abortion yeah, in a case deal, of rape? Yes, we can deal with that as well because sometimes there's, there are people walking about today who were, uh, the co- who were there because of rape. But those people so, so do, do so much for the world today as well. And, and, and I just say, well, God's watching over you. All right, God's thank you. Doing. Thank you very much. Jan sees two victims there in the case of rape, the child and, and the mother, and she's making the argument that there are victims of rape who are walking around today, Goretti, because they, there wasn't an abortion in those cases. Well, of course not. I mean, I have friends who have, have children who were conceived as a result of rape. The point is, it's about choice. The point is about saying that it's a woman's, a woman, a woman's body. She has to give over her body for nine months if she's going to turn what is a fertilised egg or an embryo into a baby. Jan says it's about two bodies. Well, you see, I, I actually don't think that you can equate a woman's life with that of a, an embryo. I don't think, and when I say her life, I mean her whole life. I don't just mean her physical life. I don't think that that, that equation uh, makes any sense at all unless... Um, you actually believe that from the moment of fertilisation, of conception, that actually that's a person. And I think that the people who think that that's a person, as opposed to that's a, a, the start of a continuum that will become a person if yeah. the woman's body puts in all the work. Um, and I think that in that situation, a woman has to have a right to say, no, I'm not willing to put in that work. I'm not willing to risk uh, uh, gestational diabetes. I'm not willing to risk high blood pressure. I'm not willing to risk all those risks that there are physical risks in pregnancy um, and to put my body through that. Um, you know, and I, and I have a right to decide that. Mm. And I think that there is a continuum and that is, well, we as pregnancy progresses... I'm glad to hear you say it's not a person. That's a philosophical category. We agree as a scientific matter, it's a human being. And when no, it's, society... It's, it's human life, when, not a human being. Those might it's, we can, it's human, she agrees with you human on that. being as a person. <laughs> Okay, if that's how you want to use the terms, it's a human life. It's not its mother's life. It's not its father's yeah, life. The fathers um, are, are here as well. Sure. And, um, and when societies go down the road of saying some human lives have not yet merited our protection, some of them because they're defective, some of them because they're vulnerable, some of them because they're dependent, that's a very dark path in history, and we don't have to look very far into the It's into a totally previous different situation when it's but a particular I, I think if I Michael, apologize. what you were saying at the start, Bill, and I agree with you that, that this is an issue where good, rational compassionate people can come to different conclusions. So it's, it's not that anybody on either side is, is bad. Uh, now, in those situations where there isn't a settled moral consensus within a society, it's not like something like slavery or murder where everybody agrees. Or well, they deny, but they didn't always. used to. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's, it's not that situation. Now, we have evolved, and as we're evolving away from those, we're evolving towards recognising women's rights. So in that situation, it shouldn't be that the what it comes down human to, the, I'll come the, to the second, is, is that we should respect, or at least the state should respect, the individual conscience of individual people on this issue. So you're perfectly entitled to promote your beliefs about it, and I would completely support your, your, your do, rights to do that. Do you think that also that, that female but, but, gender but, mutilation? But I don't think that the state should be involved. Which, in, which, which no, issues of conscience should be taken away from it, the state? It, it, I think that's just question begging. It, no, 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 it isn't because, because there are generally recognised human rights standards. The closest that we can get to an objective standard is not perfect, but it is international human rights treaties that a lot of states have signed up to. Ireland has been repeatedly told by the United Nations Human Rights Committee that it is breaching the which rights of pregnant women in Ireland Arabia, on this yeah. issue. And not only that, when Ireland's told the Human Rights Committee, that the reason they were doing that was because of the referendum. The Human Rights Committee told them that that in turn was breaching the human rights because the purpose of human rights is to protect individuals from the tyranny of the majority. Human lives. Let's go back to Belfast. Liz is on the line. How are you doing, Liz? Hello, hi. Hi, Liz. How do you see this? Wh- which side do you think should uh, or would you like to see winning next Friday? Well, I would just like to say that I- I'm a mother of two, the grandmother of six children. Um, I'm a Catholic. Um, and thankfully, I'm with fears where I wouldn't have to make that decision. Um, but I have worked in the past with women in the Women's Centre. Um, and they've came to us and they've been devastated, <clears throat> both mentally and physically. Nowhere to go to, um, no one to turn to. And I've had to make that terrible decision of, of um, having the termination. But they couldn't do it in their own country. They had to go to uh, England. Um, they had to leave their families, maybe other children. Um, and I do believe that that 
there should be um, an option for women here in Ireland um, because of fetal fetal abnormality, um, rape and incest. And we should vote, vote for, for the, the, the amendment. You want the re- the repeal of the Eighth Amendment? Sorry, to, the repeal, to yes, yes, yeah. yes. All right, thank you very much, Liz. Okay, uh, Don, okay. you just heard Michael Nugent saying, you know, rational people can disagree about these issues. There are no bad people on either side of this. Is that what the No Campaign uh, universally believes? Because I've seen some posters using pretty graphic imagery and some pretty graphic language like killing, and I've heard people using murder language in this debate. Is that consistent with saying... Rational people can disagree and there's no bad people in this argument. I think going back to the very start where Bill was saying... No, 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 deal with this point. No, 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 but it's it's all um, related. Because people's lives are what we're talking about and life and death, people can get emotional and they can, um, it can become a polarising and quite nasty space. So language really matters. So we can say more softly, ending a human life, somebody somebody else might say taking or killing. Um, I and would somebody never, else might say murdering. And somebody else might say murdering. And they want the, the to, criminal to one law degree, to be involved because they believe it is that. So when you're talking about the law, rather than ideology, uh, ideologies and opinions, we need to look at um, evidence that exists. So before the 67 Act and before Roe v. Wade, these arguments were very similar. Nobody knew the impact of the liberalising of abortion laws. 50 years later, we've seen the impact. We're all agreed that we want to show compassion. As a woman who had a pregnancy crisis, yeah. I recognise that there are services and a culture that you need that enables you to choose life. So rather than defining women's rights as having the right to end the life of your unborn child or fetus, whatever the language is, that is, um, is we've talked before, that it's not a human rights battle that I think uh, it's the antithesis of human rights. It's saying to one human being, you can have human rights at the expense of another human being. Goretti, is that, is that what's going on? The problem about that is, is that what you're saying is, is that women have less of a right to their own bodies than, women, than men do. You're saying that women have to give over their bodies to somebody else to grow, to grow somebody else in it. That is something that's not asked of anybody else. And it has no impact on d- dependent people. Because, for example, the most dependent person, somebody who's profoundly disabled or in a coma or something like that, somebody else can look after them. You can look after them. Bill can look after them. William can look after them. When you're talking about a woman who's pregnant, there is only one person. It's only her body can, can give the nourishment, can give the oxygen. If she dies... The fetus, the embryo, whatever you want to call it, dies with her. And there, that there is, is why we have the right to say, this is my body and I will decide what happens. So there are, there there are, are two were, bodies. the issue were in a vacuum, but the law does teach, as Don was saying, and when the law builds a culture of life, it goes in one direction. And when the law begins to dismantle the rights of some human beings, we see that the law heads in other directions. So you move toward physician-assisted suicide, you move Ireland, toward euthanasia. Here in Ireland, we have a constitutional amendment that says that a woman's right, life is only worth that of a fertilised egg, and that's, in spite of that, that women continue to go to... That they're equal, go, continue, is your point. Yeah, well, that they're equal, and women go to England, and women take abortion pills, and women and have abortions anyway, despite the law and the As Could far they, as is humanly practicable, the unborn baby is protected in law. The woman's life is not at risk. Michael? Yeah, we've, we've had two referendums that. trying to roll back on the 8th, and they've been defeated. We've had two referendums trying to liberalise it, and they've both passed. I'm confident that this will pass on the 25th. My thanks to Michael Nugent, Father Bill Daly, Goretti Horgan and Don McAvoy. We need another half an hour, don't we? At least another two hours on this. Thanks to all of you. Fascinating conversation. And thanks to all of our friends and colleagues here in RTE for being so such great and generous hosts to us today. That is it from us. The debate continues 